Rabbi, I know you got some questions. What's the question of the day? Oh, I've got a question here from a listener named Shlomi. And uh, they say, how do I overcome the public's perception and stigma of being a divorcee when starting to date again? Especially when I feel like a single and my ex and I separated amicably. At what point should I share that I was previously married? You know, I don't see being a divorcee as a huge stigma, whether you're in the secular or the religious world. Modern day, I think that there's a lot of um, divorcees. And I think that it's it's just what it is. It's like normal these days. Um, and if you asked me if I had a choice of having uh, whatever age you are, it doesn't matter. But like the older somebody gets, you know, never married or divorced, you know, once you hit 40s, 50s plus, if you're never married, you know, why didn't you, obviously you didn't find your person, but like, did somebody else want to make something work and you weren't willing? Was it hard? Like at least being a divorcee, I know you tried. I know you tried to build a relationship. I know you tried to make something happen. Whatever happened for whatever reason, whether it's on your side or on their side, it didn't work. Yeah. But I know you you wanted to be married and you worked really hard to get married and to try to make it ha stay married, I assume. Um, I'm making a lot of assumptions here that just might not be true. Um, I've I'm had a lot of, uh, uh, over the years, people... That people say to me that um, I would rather, if they were mature singles, they'd say, I would rather a divorcee or a widow. Yeah. They don't want someone who's never been married as, as a mature single because yeah. then you've never been in a serious relationship. So I think yeah. that could be actually for many people a, a bonus or a plus. Right. I think also if you come to any new relationship and you have a – an understanding of what happened, why it happened, and how you're going to do things differently so that you learn from everything and you level up, then I think that that's wonderful. I think that you have the experience of having been married and tried to make it work. And now you're looking for something and you have a little bit more of an understanding of how that could possibly be different the next time around. I think the danger zone is when somebody um, is divorced or in any situation and they're like, not my fault, not my problem. Like, the to like you know, not me, not me, not me. It was all them. Now it does take two to tango. And yes, sometimes one side is more mishugana and crazy than the other. But I think also taking a certain amount of responsibility. Oh, um, I didn't want to stay in that relationship anymore. I, I chose to leave. This wasn't a, a healthy environment and we weren't able to work through it. That's so much better than just blaming somebody else for something that's going on. So I think that you can also... As you talk about uh, being divorced, and the question is when, but as you're talking about it, owning up somewhere along the line is really appealing. Um, yeah. re like there's something genuine, something authentic, something really important about that that I appreciate and, and that I think singles will appreciate hearing from you. Well, as matchmakers, we know that you've been in a committed relationship before. So that's a bonus. That's good. So I don't see, and I agree with you, and I love the way you you, you separated all of that, um, owning up to it. So so knowing what you said, what and why, and then knowing what you would do differently. Right. I think also this you you've been married now you're divorced. Okay, how many people have also been in a long term relationship, not married, but maybe been in a relationship for one, two, three, five, seven? I've heard nine years, not married, but they were in a relationship that long. Although they weren't married, it's all but for the fact that they didn't have a ceremony. They were married, basically. They did have that, not, and they weren't. They weren't legally married, yes, but they had that level of commitment connection, spending the quantity of time together, living as if, except for the marriage part. So when they break up, it's like a divorce, even though they don't have the status of being divorced, it really is like a divorce. And if you think about how many people have been in long-term relationships that have broken up, that's a very high number of people. So you're not really so different than the people that are out there. And I think that a lot of people could really relate to you and to the situation. I think that your greatest challenge is going to be you personally being comfortable with saying, 
yeah, I got divorced. Okay. When you say like, oh yeah, I, I got divorced. And I, when you all of a sudden like, oh, you don't, you feel bad about it. I feel bad about it. When you're like, yeah, I got divorced. Um, you know, it, it, it didn't work. Whatever you do or don't want to explain, here's what I learned from it. And um, I'm so looking forward to being in a committed relationship yeah. again. That was something that I really desired. That's so appealing. I think that that's something that a lot of people would really appreciate and value. Can we say a litmus test could be for divorcees that when you can actually say it with that level of confidence, you're ready to get into another relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because who, like, why do you have to apologize for being who you are? Why do you have to apologize for things that happened? Things sometimes are our faults. We need to take ownership for it. Sometimes they're somebody else's fault. So, and even if it's somebody else's fault, it still involves us that we may not have full control over a situation. We, in fact, actually don't have full control over any situation. If it involves other people, then something can happen to me or with me that I didn't desire or didn't even intend to happen, but it happened. And hey, it wasn't a part of my plan. Nobody plans on it. Nobody who gets married to get divorced. I don't know anybody who no, except this one guy who his parents offered him a lot of money, I heard, <laughs> every time he would get married. So he just kept getting married and divorced, I think like 12 times. So, but other than him, most people don't get married to get divorced. They get married to stay married. Yeah. And it just doesn't always work. And especially today. Thank you. That's really good advice. I also want to say, you know, in the beginning, and I, I, I hope whoever was listening in the beginning is still listening now, that I said, you know, being in your 40s, 50s, like better that you're divorced than never been married, right? Because you haven't been living with somebody. But I want to clarify, I was saying that to this person who's divorced, when I would talk one on one, I would say that as a, as a point of perspective. But if I was talking to somebody who wasn't divorced, who was never been married in their 40s and 50s, I would also say to them, well, you've probably had relationships, or even if you haven't had them, you've desired to have them, have them. you've made an effort to have them, you've worked towards having them. And just because it didn't happen, so it didn't happen, there's, there's certain things, again, that we don't have control over that are very difficult to handle. For a lot of people, you want to get a job, you get a job. You don't like it, you switch jobs. You don't, okay, great, you switch jobs. You don't like that career, you switch careers. Boom, you could switch careers, right? You could make so much happen in your work life. And in a relationship, we can't just make it happen. We have to have another person who's also saying, I want to make that happen. And I want to make that happen with you. And so we also don't have control over it. And there's a lot of people that do end up, especially modern day, unable to find their partner, which is something that's very difficult and very painful. And it's not for lack of trying or lack of desiring it. Yeah. Such a great general principle is that so often we try to control things we can't control. And this is something that very well could be out of your control. And you've tried everything you could. And I think we need to to champion and, and to applaud those who try so hard. It is the hardest job in the world, dating. There's nothing harder. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It really is. So for anybody who is divorced and looking, and especially um, for our listener who wrote in that question, please may you continue to have the strength to go through the dating process and may you have the confidence to be able to share. I'm divorced. I'm looking to get remarried. And here's what I've learned. And may you be able to just walk around knowing that it's okay. You get to try again. And you can tell somebody about this without feeling upset or ashamed or embarrassed or whatever the negative feelings are that you associate with divorce. Divorce can be a blessing in circumstances where we need it. We need it. And that's why it's here. And that's why it exists. So please may you have the confidence to date somebody and to share this with them and to build a beautiful relationship with somebody new. This is when we say amen. <laughs>